What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys a requested video. A lot of people have asked about me doing a what's on my Android phone. So today I'm gonna bring that to you guys. I'm not gonna do every single app on the phone because it just takes too long, but I am gonna do my top 10 most used apps on a daily basis. Now today I'm using the LG V20 for this video, not using my Pixel XL, mainly because I stole the Android developer preview, the Android O developer preview yesterday. Did a video on that, I'll drop a link below in the description if you wanna check it out. It is very unstable, so don't install the developer preview on your Pixel unless you have another phone. Lots of app crashes. So the first app I'm gonna talk about today is Action Launcher 3. That is my launcher of choice. You guys have seen me talk about it in previous videos. One of the reasons I love Action Launcher 3 are all the custom theming options, especially those that are built around your wallpaper. You can choose colors for the search box, the all apps background, quick drawer background, etc all based on the color of the wallpaper that you've selected. That's definitely a nice feature, something that distinguishes it from some of the other launchers out there. I love Nova as well, but Action Launcher adds that extra little bit of customization. There are also a lot of other great features, uh, for instance, like the shutter feature, where you can just swipe up to get to the folders. Now, I know that Nova has that feature now, uh, but Action Launcher was one of the first launchers to incorporate that. You also see here that you've got the slide out widget on the side. I got my calendar and Google Play Music. A lot of nice customization. Swipe out the other side, you've got your app list there. So you don't even have to use the app drawer if you don't want to. And as you notice here, I have the pixel launcher features that are built into Action Launcher 3. I can swipe up from the bottom and actually get my app drawer there just like you do on the pixel. So Action Launcher 3, a great app. I highly recommend it. If you're using Nova and you wanna try something slightly different, give it a try. You might like it better. And you can see all the pixel launcher features there at the top. As soon as you download it, you just tap on that you can enable all those features if you're looking for them. Uh, the next app that's on my list is Flamingo. So Flamingo is my Twitter client of choice. Probably a lot of you guys have seen me use it before. You can see that Flamingo has a really nice clean theme to it where you've got your home screen, you've got your mentions, you've got your direct messages. It's very easy to navigate. Also on the side, the slide out menu, you've got things like timeline activity, profile list, etc. One of my favorite things about it, again, is its custom themes. If you go into the preset themes, there's a lot of different color options to choose from, especially the Flamingo theme, as well as the OLED Black, which is a very nice dark theme, especially when you're using the app at night. Now, I know there's a lot of other good choices on Android, for instance, Talon, Phoenix, and of course, the stock Twitter app, but I've found Flamingo to be very enjoyable. It's very, very fast. It's also very, very simple, and that is the reason that I like this app. The next thing that I use on a daily basis is my weather app. You can see it right there, Dark Sky. Dark Sky is a subscription-based app, so if you wanna get this app, I believe it costs $2.99 a year. We'll check that in the Play Store really quick for you guys. It gives you really nice information though and also warns you of any sort of precipitation, dangerous weather, storms, or snow if you live in an area that has that. Obviously in Arizona, we don't have to worry about it. it has a very clean layout. You can also get this information on iOS, which is another reason I like it because I do use an iPhone as well. And you can get notifications for things like next hour precipitation. You can also choose to put the temperature up in the status bar, which gives you your temperature right there at the top. And you can get a daily summary with your forecast delivered to you daily if you like. So all of this information with the severe weather alerts and its accuracy, I mean, it really uh, alerts you of when it's gonna rain within like, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of it starting to rain. That's information you can use. And I do think it's worth the price. We can check really quick my subscriptions and I'll show you guys the exact price. It is $2.99 per year for Dark Sky Premium. All right, so that's the weather app. The next app I use daily, as you guys have seen many times, Backdrops. This is my favorite wallpaper app, and you guys know I'm changing my theme on my phones constantly because I have so many different phones. I always try to keep a different theme on them. They may have some amazing custom wallpapers you can only get from Backdrops, like you can see here in the Explore tab. Also, there is a subscription-based part to this app. It's free to download. If you wanna get some of the more interesting wallpapers, you can buy, for instance, the Pro Pack. You can also buy the AMOLED Pack, which gives you some really nice dark wallpapers. There's a new one right there. I actually haven't seen that one. I'll have to put that one on my phone. Looks really, really nice. Some of these exclusive wallpapers they've added are really worth the price. And another thing that they do is they always provide topical wallpapers. For instance, the Android O Developer Preview dropped yesterday, and you can see right here, you can set the Android O Developer Preview wallpaper from in backdrops. I actually use this to add Android Developer O Preview wallpaper to the LG V20. Highly recommend backdrops, try it for free, and if you like what they offer, then download uh, or pay for one of the extra premium packs. 
Uh, my shipping app of choice is Aftership. Of course, I get a lot of shipments in for the YouTube channel, so I have to have something to keep track of all of these shipments that come in. Aftership is a very, very simple app. One thing I like about it a lot is when you have a tracking number copied to your clipboard, it'll automatically detect uh, that tracking number and the service as soon as you open the app and it'll add the shipment there for you. And then all you've got to do is give it a custom name. So you can see you add a custom name, detects the carrier and you're good to go. It also has a widget. I'm not huge on using shipping widget, but you can add that to your home screen as well. It has a variety of carriers here, pretty much any carrier that you would use in the US. And overall just has a nice, simple material layout that's easy to use. The next app is an app for news aggregation. And a couple of these apps that I use are news aggregation. Of course, I'm reading Android news every day. Uh, and one of the places that I get a lot of my Android news from is Reddit. So Reddit, I don't post there that often, but I do read a lot of stuff. There's always a lot of breaking stories, especially to do with Android. And Boost is one of the cleanest apps where you can get all of your Reddit information in one place and you can read it sort of every day. If you just wanna get a rundown of what's hot, you've got the front page here. You can also filter at the top here by topic. You can also switch themes. There's a lot of themes here. You can go into the night mode if you wanna read this in a dark sort of theme, which I like. And of course, you've got all of your subscriptions here. One of my favorites, of course, is the Android subscription. So you go there and you get all of the hot stories for the day. This allows me to keep up with what's going on, especially while I'm teaching at the university. In between classes, I can scan through here and I can find exactly what I'm looking for. It's definitely better, in my opinion, than the stock Reddit app. You have to try it. The premium subscription uh, gets rid of the ads, but the rest of the functionality is there. Uh, if you don't pay for it, I believe it's $249 for the premium. And I highly recommend this if you either post on Reddit a lot or you read Reddit for your news. Uh, the next app is my podcast app of choice. This is a pretty popular app among Android enthusiasts, and it also works on iOS. It's Pocket Cast. And uh, Pocket Cast just gives you a really nice interface where all of your podcasts are there. You've got a thumbnail for each of them on the home page. You've also got a tab to go over and easily get to new releases. So you can see all of your current podcasts the day they were released. You also get the size of the file so you can get an idea of how long it's going to be. You can also download this while you're on Wi-Fi. That way it will save uh, when you're out. You don't have to use your data to listen to the podcast. Another thing I really like about Pocket Cast is the Discover feature. If you have you know, not very many podcasts, you want to get into some new stuff, you can go in, check out Featured, Trending, Top, uh, Nearby, which will use your location if you allow to go through and see what sort of podcasts are hot nearby you in your particular area. So overall, just the best podcast app there is, in my opinion. I use it on Android and on iOS, and I recommend it to anybody. It does have a premium cost. Again, I think it's five bucks, but it's definitely worth the five bucks. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the next app I use on a daily basis might not be for everybody. This is for all my sneakerheads out there that watch my tech channel as well. Uh, I use StockX on a daily basis to search for sneakers that I'm looking for. They have a very, very nice looking app. It's very clean, easy to navigate. Uh, sometimes they try to add a few too many features and sometimes it can lag a little bit. But in terms of actually buying sneakers uh, on the resale market, there is no other app out there that has the kind of uh, material design that you want to see on Android. You can see the menus are nice and organized. And for the most part, it's fast and fluid. They update the app all the time. You can go in, you can bid on a shoe. You can also have it sorted by your size. You can see my size 12. That way I only get information relevant to my particular size when I'm searching through shoes. And I would say in general, it is better than the competition. You guys probably know if you're a sneakerhead, Goat is the other big uh, third-party reseller uh, app, middleman app, and their app crashes more often for me. It's also not as nicely organized in my opinion. You don't have as many features, and it also doesn't integrate in terms of notifications as well with Android. Getting down to the nitty gritty here, Solid Explorer is an app that I also use all the time for navigating around the file system on Android. You pretty much need a File Explorer app. I use for a very long time uh, another popular file app, ES File Explorer, but I found out, and a lot of people found out, that uh, that particular app actually had some malware slash spyware built into it, and a lot of people weren't happy about that, including me, so I decided to go ahead and switch over to a new app. Solid Explorer is that app. It has a very nice material design. The pop-up menu is very easily organized. You can also do things like 
copy and paste files very, very easily. Just from the top, you've got all sorts of options. Select all, you can get properties for your files, move things around, create folders, etc. There's a whole list of operations here, of course, that you can do as well. If you're, for instance, copying files around, you can see how long you've got left till those operations are completed. I highly recommend Solid Explorer, especially if you like the material look. You guys will notice all the apps that I use for the most part. Uh, I try to keep that material look in Android going, and I like clean apps that are easy to read, easy to navigate, especially the ones that I'm gonna use on a daily basis. Uh, my final app for this video is Morning Reader. This is the second app that I really use primarily for getting my text, uh, tech news daily. And Morning Reader is even more simple than Boost for Reddit. Morning Reader just gives you essentially tech news and that's it. No other type of news is provided by the app except tech news. You get your top stories right there when you log into the app and you can see what's trending for the day. So you can see Medium launches memberships, $5 a month. Super Mario Run is now available for Android. I did just download that before I made this video. So uh, I might talk about that a little bit in my next vlog, but go check that out if you're interested in Super Mario Run. Uh, all the news for the day, and you can see that you've got top stories and then you've got the trending stories right now. If you only wanna see those top stories, you can just read those, or you can show more to see what's down the search rankings even further. On the pullout tab, you can see also the daily information if you wanna go back and read stories from the previous day, which is nice if you wanna see the top stories overview for your week. All right, guys, so those are my top used apps, top 10 apps that I use on Android. Let me know in the comments what you guys are using, if there's something I should pick up. Uh, again, there's a lot of other apps. I might do a follow-up uh, about lesser known apps. If you guys are interested, let me know and I'll definitely do that. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. You can find me below at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter at the links in the description. Appreciate you guys checking out this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.